Earnhardt understands that, and all he's doing is outsmarting a lot of folks that haven't had that short track experience. That's the thoughts of Junior Johnson about Dale Earnhardt, defending Winston Cup champion, the defending champion of this race, as we prepare for the green to flag. Here it comes down, just about ready to fall, and that flag is unfurled. Into turn one, and Morgan Shepard squirts out in front. Morgan Shepard pops into the lead. Earnhardt goes into second. Neil Bonnet's in third. Alan Kowicki down low on the inside for fourth. Back straight away. Kowicki making a move. He's trying for third. Allen sticks the nose of number seven inside. This is the kid that sat on the pole last year. He's under Neil Bonnet. One car spinning. Brad Teague in the wall up in turn three. Caution's out. On the first lap, there's Brad Teague who just nipped the outside wall. Brad T got her turned around though and he's gonna come back around before he loses a lap. We will stay in the lead lap. It was smart thinking Earnhardt to dive in under to take the lead from Shepard under caution. That's an Earnhardt move. Shepard will look forward to trying to stick that right back to him in turn one. Now they race back to the line. They have to come back to the line and Earnhardt got underneath. They race all the way around, and had there been three or four cars jammed up there in turn number three, that would have got real interesting. Well, you can see how important it is to lead this race. Earnhardt, under caution, dives under to get that lead. He wants to get the lead where there's no cars in front of him, and he certainly wants to try to get out and take care of that car today. Phil Parsons, car number 55. Pictures there from as we get set on a restart. Pace car is coming out, going to pick up the field. They will check turn three. So Dale Earnhardt is out in front. Morgan Shepard finds himself in second. And running the third spot is Neil Bonnet. Rusty Wallace is up to fourth more live from Richmond in a moment. Green has just been dropped, and they're back underway. Another time here after we had a spin of the very first lap by Brad Teague. No damage done. He's back on the field. Everybody's racing. And there's Davey Allison slapping the wall up in turn two. And again, the caution's coming out. Now, what I think we're seeing here is an extremely cold track and those tires just aren't getting a grip as we get ready to go. Nobody's getting a good bite. We're exactly right, Ken. We talked to some of the drivers earlier and they said it takes five to 10 laps for these tires to heat up where they'll really stick. And I think that's a problem here. Now, Davey Allison has solidly tapped the wall. Remember that he did that in qualifying as well. And they've really busted number 28 on the right side. Take a look at that car as he comes in. Let's get Chris Economaki in. We, we checked with several of the drivers just before the start about the tires and the track, and they were all concerned about the extremely low temperatures and the dirt on the track. Normally, it takes two or three laps to get tires up to operating temperature. With the cold weather, they say it's going to take five or six laps, and several drivers said in these five or six laps are when accidents can happen because the cars are not getting a hold of this worn-out old asphalt paving. That's what we're seeing now. Let's, Back to you. Let's see if we can discern right here, Chris, what happened. The car number 28 in replay, field moving down out of turn number two into the back straightaway here, and he's already in the wall. That car just walked out from underneath the Rainier Lundy car. The owners of the car are a couple of horsemen, J.T. Lundy, owner of Calumet Farms, and Harry Rainier. And, of course, Harry was calling a lot of the shots last Sunday down there in the Daytona 500 when that car came home in second place, but not to be today. Well... Davey had had a problem with that turn earlier in the week, and I asked him what happened because he had ran great laps and he had hit the wall earlier in the week, and he said, I just ran out of brains, I think. He said, uh, the car felt so good, then all of a sudden it doesn't feel good. What happens is this racetrack is so slick, the car just slides across the racetrack and the tires won't bite, and it's almost like a push to the driver. Then they jerk it, then it comes around and it creates a loose position. It just goes around on you quick. So Davy Allison becomes the first victim of the Richmond Fairgrounds this afternoon after having started in the 15th position. He's out of it. Back in the garage area, they'll try to get him back in because they want those points. Bad break for Davy Allison. And up in front, we have Morgan Shepard trailing Dale Earnhardt by one car position as they get ready on the get-go here. Under caution for the second time, and not too much of a surprise. Very cold, and of course they run slick tires if you're unfamiliar with motorsports. No grooves on these tires, no tread. You want to get just as much power to the ground as possible on these asphalt tracks, and so the uh, issue is not getting a groove tire, but getting power down. Davey Allison in his first season running a full schedule, he's taking on these short tracks. Davey, uh, 
you're the first to say you need more experience on short tracks. Uh, how do you like starting your education here at Richmond? It, this is probably one of the easiest tracks to make a mistake on because it's a very unforgiving track. If you if you make a mistake, usually you pay for it right away. It does. It's not something that just goes on and on and then finally bites you later on. If you make a mistake here, it bites you right then. You find yourself in the wall. There's not very much room on this racetrack, either on the front straightaway or in the turns. That's Davey Allison yesterday. That's Davey Allison's car here today as you look at these live pictures back in the garage area. Race number two of the $15 million Winston Cup Series and Davey Allison's Ford Thunderbird. Real tore up in the tail. Let's go to Dave Despain. One of the issues we've talked about here is the tire war between Hoosier and Goodyear. That is a Hoosier shod car. And one of the differences between the Hoosiers and the Goodyears is the Hoosier tires take a little longer to warm up. Obviously, Allison didn't give him time to warm up. He got caught out there on cold tires and into the fence, and that may have been one of the keys. We're ready for a restart. And Brad Teague was also on Hoosiers. That other car that spun Brad Teague was also on Hoosiers. We're away. Green is back out once again. And on the get go into turn number one, car number three, Earnhardt out in front. Morgan Shepard is in second, Kowicki in third, and Rusty Wallace in fourth. In the fifth position, back straight away, comes Neil Bonner. Morgan Shepard just hit the wall following Earnhardt. He slid, hit it pretty hard. He stayed out, but you will see there's a big gap. Morgan, right here, if you look the right side of his car, you can see the damage. He hit it fairly hard and just slid right into it. He almost got tapped by Kowicki, who had to get in the binders hard to keep from spinning him around down here in turn number one. Races away with 11 laps complete now. Already two cautions, and there's the interval between first and second place is on this half-mile track. Better than 110 miles from right there. Dale Earnhardt back in front where he was last year at the end of this thing where he was two years ago. You can notice now Morgan Shepard is holding the field up tremendously. He may have bent some of that sheet metal in on a tire, but now this is when you have to knock Morgan Shepard out of the way or Earnhardt's going to have a drive away. These cars are getting backed up. Here's Rusty Wallace making moves. This is the time people had to force him away, force their way and use a Dick Butkus mentality. And Richard Petty has moved from ninth up into sixth position, car number 43. Petty right into the sixth position. There you see him in car number 43, trying to close up at this point on Jeff Bodine. Pretty good start here this afternoon. Back up front once again. I would watch for Rusty Wallace to bust out. Alan Kowicki, very tender with his equipment. He owns his own car, very careful about it, and I wouldn't be surprised if it would be Wallace that begins to try to ramrod his way through. As we watch Earnhardt roll out in first, Morgan Shepard in second, and watch this battle back here for third spot. That green and white car is Rusty Wallace, twice a winner last year, once at Riverside, California, and once at Watkins Glen, New York, on the road courses. He looks like he wants to peer down the inside and try to move Kowicki, the Wisconsin runner, over. Pretty good scramble there. Well, they're certainly hooked up close. The number 75 car driven by Neil Bonnet it's on Hoosier tires also. Those tires tend to stick better after they run a while, so maybe we'll see Neil in 10 or 12 laps start to make a move. Well, we've now kicked off 16 laps here today. Here's Kowicki, and here on the inside is number 27 making a shot again. Pulls right up and taps his man on the bumper just to let him know he's there. Last lap at an average speed of 91 miles per hour. 91, that's the average speed for the lap. And here comes Wallace again attacking on the inside. He tries to loosen Kowicki up every so often, just tapping on the back bumper to let him know that he wants through and Kowicki won't have anything to do with him. They have faced each other off on a lot of half-mile races of the American Speed Association over the years, the ASA ranks. Well, Here's Mark Wallace. Allen. Rusty Wallace is an excellent short track racer. Here's that move on the inside, down to the bottom of the racetrack and not getting through. Let's go to Mark Allen. Got Davey Allison in the garage here. Davey, you hit the wall hard. What happened? Well, I just got up in the loose stuff on the outside in the first turn, and the uh, car just kept sliding. You know, there's just a lot of trash out there, a lot of debris, a lot of dirt and dust and everything, and I guess uh, I tried to get to the outside a little too early. They're working on Davey Ellis' truck, trying to get him back out. There you see. number.